Hello and welcome to this presentation about the latest methods to model thermodynamics, particularly in energy systems. My name is Hoda Kareke and I'm presenting here on behalf of the company EU Tech Scientific Engineering in Aachen, Germany. I'll start first with a quick intro to the subject. As you are most likely aware, efficient energy conversion and energy utilization are in the limelight when it comes to designing products and processes. I probably don't need to go into detail on why accurate modeling tools are a great way in making systems more efficient. On the one hand, it's a great way to design a system itself, and on the other, it's a great way to develop control systems. Over and over, a lot of companies are running into a need for systematic modeling approach to engineering thermodynamics. So on the basic level, we are talking about thermodynamic functionalities such as state equations, state changes, chemical reactions, and many others. But it's not only that. There is no need to reinvent the wheel every time a pump or a chemical reactor needs to be modeled. So our solution, and that for many of our clients, was a toolbox. Thermolib, an add-on to the MATLAB Simulink platform. The idea is we build an extensive library of thermodynamic ele elements and that frees the user of bothering with how to implement correct thermodynamic behavior and focus instead on the design of the system itself. So here's a quick overview of the content. What we'll do today is a top-down approach. That is, we'll start with a set of examples to give you a feel of what a thermodynamics library like Thermolib is about and how it works. We've selected a few examples simplified from the industry to demonstrate that. Next, we'll go over the architecture and some special features like thermodynamic balancing and command line functions. And finally, we'll end up the presentation with a summary. So we'll start with the systems that can be modeled. Our first example is that of an absorption heat pump. But before we go over the process model and simulink, here's a basic explanation of the process itself. This is the flow scheme of a single stage ammonia water system. The system is composed of four main parts. You have the evaporator, the absorber, the desorber, and the condenser. The system works by cycling varying concentrations of ammonia water solution, and due to the phase changes in this solution, heat is gained from the system. We'll start on the left side of the chart, where ammonia liquid is input to the evaporator. The resulting ammonia gas is mixed in the absorber with a weak ammonia solution. This mixture is then cooled down, and due to this cooling down, heat is gained from the absorber. The now resulting strong ammonia solution has to be pumped to the desorber part of the system. In the desorber, heat is invested to heat up this ammonia solution, and the resulting ammonia gas is passed again to the condenser. Some heat is gained before it reaches the condenser using the rectifier. The liquid part from the desorber is passed through a heat exchanger to gain further heat from it. And then this weak solution is passed again into the absorber like we mentioned before where it's mixed with the ammonia gas. In the upper part, now the hot ammonia gas is passed through the condenser and again heat is gained from the system there by cooling it down. The ammonia liquid now goes through the expansion valve and back to the evaporator and the cycle repeats itself. Now the challenge here is to implement such a model and simulink without too much overhead. I'll show you by jumping directly here to the model and simulink. This is what the absorption heat pump model looks like in simulink, built using pre-programmed thermodynamic blocks, part of the Thermolib library. The blocks that you see here, like the gas dryer, the desorber, the heat exchanger, the condenser, pump, and mixer, and so on. These are all pre-programmed blocks, part of the library, that are configured according to the requirements in our system. If I go to the Simulink library and open the library browser, you can see that the thermodynamic systems library is part of the Simulink toolbox. And then if I go, for example, under components, hydraulics, 
you can see many other components like compressors, mixers, pumps, and so on that you can just drag and drop to the model and pre-configure and use in your model. So what we have here is a model that reflects the flowchart that we just saw. So on the left side, we have the evaporator where ammonia gas is passed through the absorber where it's mixed with weak ammonia solution. This is pumped to the desorber part of the, of the system, passed through the rectifier, and in the end, again, to the condenser expansion valve for the cycle to repeat itself. For now, to give you a feel of how this thing works, I'm just going to focus on a small part of the model, and that's the condenser part. So I'll just zoom in there. So the first question that comes up here is how do these plugs communicate with each other? How do they pass the actual physical flows from one block to the other? Our solution was to use a bus system. So each of these connections that you see here as bus signals, these represent actual mass flows. To show you what I mean, I'll take a bus selector and attach it here to one of these bus signals. And then we'll look inside the bus selector to see what's available on the bus. What you'll see here is a list of properties that describe the mass flow that's passing there. What we have is, for example, here, the molar flow, temperature, pressure, enthalpy, and so on, other properties like the vapor fractions, and what does the flow actually consist of. So each of these bus signals will have these properties set to define the mass flow that is going there and deleting this. So where do these flows start from? To start such a mass flow, we use a so-called source block. In this case, for the condenser, we need a source of cold water. And this is what we have here, a source of cold water. If I double-click on this block and to view the mask, You can see here inside that you can define what your flow is like. In this case, we've said that it's a source of water. We've defined it as a volumetric flow, that is, we define the volume flow rate as 1 liter per second, and define the temperatures as 30 degrees Celsius with 1.4 bar. Once I click OK, the source block will take care of making sure that the thermodynamic properties on the output bus are correct. That means all the properties we just saw, like the enthalpy, entropy, vapor fractions, and so on, will be automatically calculated and made available on the bus. And this is an important point. All these mass flows on these bus signals are thermodynamically correct and consistent, and each of the blocks knows how to handle these bus signals, and all of the outputs are also thermodynamically correct and consistent. To display the information on these buses, we use the so-called flow display. This is basically a sink or a display to show this information in a more user-friendly way. So in this instance, I've attached a flow display to the incoming ammonia gas to the condenser and another one at the outgoing ammonia liquid from the condenser. I've also attached a third one to the output of the heated water that goes out of the condenser. You can see there the molar flow, temperature, pressure, enthalpy, the vapor fractions, and what the flow is consisting of.